Okay, ready. All right, we are live. This is Noah Voles, and welcome to the DC to be revolution where we think big to live large. Uh, today, I have a great opportunity to talk with Dr. Liam Schubel. He is the author of the smash hit book, Cast to be Chiropractors. And as a chiropractic visionary, he has built a chiropractic empire that consists of over 20 chiropractic offices and has also created Liam Schubel Visions Worldwide or Vision or Schubel Visions Worldwide, which is a chiropractic communications company. He's also the creator of the best chiropractic mission trip ever. As you can see, he's a busy man making a huge impact in the world of chiropractic. So grateful to have you here. Thanks for being here. Well, absolutely. My pleasure. I can see you've done your homework already. Well, I, I, I've done a little bit. There's sure more to do. You've done so much. It's, it's uh, you know, hard to keep track of everything that you're doing. Um, I know that most students, you know, are thinking about all the debt they're getting in as they're in school. And you've been so successful, you know, creating this empire of over, over 20 businesses. What's the original advice you have for students coming out of school with all that debt to hit the ground running and to be as successful as you were? I think, you know, you had over a thousand patients within maybe the first six months or a year. That's right. Uh, my uh, mentor, one of my mentors is Tony Robbins, Anthony Robbins, and he has a saying that's very famous and it's so famous it's gotten cliche, right? Success leaves clues. So what I found, and, and I studied neuro-linguistic programming, what I found is that anything that you want to do, uh, all you need to do is find somebody who's actually doing it, and then think the way they do, speak the way they do, act the way they do, initially, right, to grow and, and create and manifest what it is that they have. Then you could change it up and make it yours. You know, when I, when I first, uh, was, when I first uh, went into chiropractic practice, there was a doctor, Dr. Ray Page, that was a Godstead practitioner, and he was seeing 550 visits a week, and I was seeing zero visits a week, right? So, so I said, you know, let me uh, let me listen to him, let me hang out with him, let me become his shadow, and let me duplicate exactly what he's doing to get to 550 visits a week. And when I broke that record, then I was looking for my next uh, mentor, you know, and the, and the next one was Dr. Dennis Nicotow. And he was seeing, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand visits a week. So I went to go see him. You know, I said, okay, th th that's what I did until I got what it was that I wanted. Then I found that I needed a system to duplicate what it was that I was doing. Because, you know, by the time you get to a thousand visits a week, you've you pretty much developed your personality in the practice, and people love you for that. But if you want to expand from that point, you have to create, uh, and one of my favorite books is called The E-Myth uh, by Michael Gerber. You have to create the systems to be able to duplicate yourself. And one of the big challenges that chiropractors have in chiropractic is that they have practices that are so personality driven. You know, it's like, oh, shoot, well, that works great for you. But when I do it, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. And, and, you know, so I've had to develop systems and strategies that anybody could use to grow their practice. And that was the, the impetus behind creating Schubel Vision. I just saw these Schubel Vision seminars. I saw so many people that, yes, they were good adjusters, right? Yes, they knew the philosophy. But when they opened their mouth and started to try to communicate it, they fell flat on their face. And you'd walk into their office, you know, you'd get an adjustment from them and it would be like, a, a you know, almost a uh, experience with the universe. You'd be, ah, you know, and you'd walk out into the waiting room and you could hear the crickets because there was nobody else there but crickets. You'd say, how could this be? My goodness, if I had the skills that this guy had, I mean, I, I should have, you know, 10,000 people a week visiting me, right? I mean, we have that, especially as students, we have that idea of, gosh, if I was a great adjuster, you know, I, I my office would be flooded. Gosh, if I I had the right location, my office would be flooded. Gosh, if I had the right marketing strategy, my office would be flooded. But when in reality, uh, what I found, and, and it's not just, this doesn't just pertain to chiropractic. What I found is that the top professionals around the world in anything uh, really have two components. One is they're experts at communicating what it is that they do. And two, they have a passion underneath that that's interwoven with their communication that when you're in their presence, you are almost uh, of the level of, you know, it's a pleasure to be with you, doctor. You know, thank you so much for, for seeing me today. Rather than many doctors of chiropractic are almost begging their patients, please, would you come back Friday? You know, it's, it's the other way around. You have to understand, 
they need you, right? And so you have to come from that position of authority. And, and one of my other great mentors was Dr. Sid Williams, the, the founder of uh, Life University. I went to Life University. I graduated from there in 1995. And he actually used to be, you know, we'd have assembly and he would be the speaker. And he would speak for an hour, two hours, and you'd be right with him the whole time. And when you were in his presence, I, you know, him and Nell Williams, who just turned 90, 90 year, years old, bless her heart, uh, they used to walk in and it was like George and Martha Washington of, of Tick, you know, walking into the, they, they had this aura, this presence about them. And, you know, I still have run into patients of his that, you know, th their lives were saved 30, 40 years ago. But you know what they tell me about? Not only the, the, the great results that they got, but that loving, giving, serving uh, attitude and personality that Dr. Sid and Dr. Nell had. They were in chiropractic because they absolutely loved it. And you could feel it when you were around them. And, and, you know, even you had, uh, uh, Sid used to talk about, uh, he went to go visit Dr. Clarence Gonstead, right, at the, at the uh, Mount Horeb Clinic. And you have to understand, in the 50s, Gonstead, uh, B.J. Palmer considered Gonstead a mixer because uh, anybody who adjusted below C1 or C2 was a ranked mixer. So they went, to, they snuck out and they went to go see uh, Dr. Gonstead. And I think Gonstead was finally able to see them about 2 o'clock in the morning, right? And, and one of the things that impressed them was as Gonstead was going through his day, was everybody was like, thank you, Dr. Gonstead, thank you, Dr. Gonstead, thank you, Dr. Gonstead, thank you. I mean, almost like, thank you, Dr. Gonstead. We're not worthy, Dr. Gonstead, you know. And that's when, that happens when you have the ability to speak. Another thing of Dr. Sid Williams, he used to say, boy, you got to learn how to talk with authority. You know, talk with authority. What are you talking about, Dr. Sid? You got to talk with authority. And I never really understood the, the importance of that when I was a student. But in reality, this is what we see, and, and this is one of the reasons I started the best mission trip ever, was that we see the students in chiropractic colleges today being illy prepared for the real world because they're learning in school fear, right? You know, chiropractic causes strokes, you know, which is baloney. Chiropractic hurts people, you know, and, and you know, you can't just this, you can't just that, you can't do this, don't worry about that, you better worry about this. But and and so they have this fear-driven uh, thing behind them that chiropractic is in some way, some shape, some form dangerous. They have these massive student debts of $200,000. They're not really clear on their adjusting skills. And, then it's, and, they, and they've never learned any communication. So they don't know how to communicate chiropractic. They don't know the kinesthetic part of chiropractic. They don't know the uh, auditory part of communicating chiropractic. They don't know uh, the visual part of communicating chiropractic. So they have no communication training very little uh, adjusting training, a tremendous amount of fear, and a big debt, and then you say, hey, good luck to you, you know, and so th if there's no, th it's not a mystery, it's not like history's mystery as to why uh, the students are failing, it's because they're, they're and, and then on top of that, they're not connecting greats in chiropractic today. Do you know that I am banned from quite a few chiropractic colleges, number one, so they don't have access to me, right? The, number one. So I have 20 chiropractic offices, but my message is dangerous and not valuable, right? Secondly, I'll tell you, when I go to uh, chiropractic campuses, I've been to LifeWest, you know, 15, 20 students so, uh, show up. So, you know, I spend all this time and energy going out. And the students, I think, are under this preconceived notion that, hey, this is a CCE accredited institution, you know, and, and in my book, we call it the the Council of Chiropractic Elimination, right? The CCE, you know, hey, we wouldn't be having to learn this if this wasn't crucial to our success. I mean, that's the big, eventually someday, my friends, it's going to be this class action lawsuit uh, from the students of chiropractic. You talk about a revolution against the CCE because it's, it's really a travesty that I spend $200,000 for my chiropractic education and 90% of it, I don't use in practice. You know, so like, I remember, by the way, when I graduated, they didn't have part four, right? So I remember coming back after eight years of practice, a thousand visits a week, you'd walk into my office, it was like an emergency room. You know, most, 90 something percent of the people I would take care of and adjust were very sick people. I was upper cervical practitioner, toggle. And you'd have to refer most of those people out of the student clinic, right? So I walk into this part four and, and I talked to one of the professors there, and, and, and this was at Palmer College, I was taking the exam. And I said, oh, so, you know, what's this all about? You know, the x-ray portion. He goes, oh, you know, this is preparing you to be a great professor. So I walked out and I go, brother, I, you know, 90-something percent of this is utter, you know, baloney. I probably didn't use that word. But, you know, the, the, the point is we're setting our students up for failure because we're teaching them fear. 
We're not teaching them how to communicate. We're not teaching them how to adjust. By the way, there's schools where adjustment, manipulation, same thing, right? And so then we wonder why these doctors of physiatry or these doctors of physiotherapy, this new profession that they're creating, they start manipulating the, the spine and chiropractors say, oh my goodness, you know, we're the only ones trained to manipulate. Well, frankly, air can walk on your spine and, and manipulate it. You know, anybody, any idiot or moron can manipulate the spine. The whole idea with chiropractic was that it was specific. So we're not learning, uh, in many chiropractic colleges, I mean, Life West is, is different, certainly. We're not learning uh, when to adjust, how to adjust, uh, you know, the frequency of adjusting. We're not learning all these things. So we've kind of like been lost in the profession. And we have a group of, of students. This is what I find with the chiropractic mission trip. The first day they come down on, on the best mission trip ever, we go to Peru, right? And, and we're up in the Andes Mountains or the Amazon jungle. The first day, the experience is like this. You know, there's like a thousand people in line. They're like, Doc, doc what should I do? I, you know, what, are, what are all these people here for? Well, they're here to get their spines checked for vertebral subluxation. And if you find indicators of subluxation, you're going to adjust that. That's it? Well, you know, there's no uh, places to plug in any baloney. So this is about all we have is our hands, our hearts, and our minds, and our voices to change the world. So let's get to it. And so you watch them, and they're like very fearful, like, and you're like, okay, well, you know, was that right? And I'm like, well, we want to watch just just one segment, not the whole spine in one shot, okay? You know, we got to have some indicators there. And so that's the first day. Second day, miracle cases, which is just normal physiology being restored, right? The miracle cases start to come back, and this lady's like, I had a tumor fall off. I couldn't see. I couldn't hear. You know, it's like Harvey Lillard all over again, you know? And and, and, and they're like, wow, what, I did that? And it's like, well, not really. Innate, you know, took your baloney adjustment, your, your uh, you know, universal omnidirectional force and adapted it uh, and created some constructive survival values. And then it restored its ability to transmit and express life optimally. And that's what happened. You know, innate is great and it's always on the job. And so they're like, wow, this is awesome. So the second day they're adjusting, they're adjusting. I'll tell you this, by the last day of the adjusting trip, they're like, Shubal, let's get over to the hospital and get everybody out now. Come on, let's go. And so they become these leaders of chiropractic. Like you're talking about creating this revolution. The revolution starts from within. It's an inside out job. We can have anything we want. We can do anything we want. You know, when you hear chiropractors complaining about all these things they have to do in the office, you know, to be compliant with this and compliant with that. Guess who created all that? Chiropractors. Somebody didn't come in from the outside and create this, and they did all that so that they could get paid by third-party uh, insurance companies. This was the biggest, man, you want to talk about a hoodwink of our profession. They came in, the third-party paying, and then in order for us to be like medicine, we adopted medical education, right? And so now we're treating things, right? You're treating things in a, in a, in a uh, insurance-based environment. So you're treating conditions, and now you have to diagnose and treat those conditions in order to get paid by an insurance company. And then here's the, the greatest thing that ever happened, uh, and I say this uh, in, in, with sarcasm. I mean, the AMA, we were worried about, uh, you know, fish buying and these guys, you know, trying to eliminate us with the, with the Wilk case. I'll tell you the chiropractors, the, the chiropractors that, are, that uh, you know, we call them chiropractic ladies of the night, the guys that'll do anything to get paid, right? Those guys that brought in the insurance, they did the best to contain and eliminate chiropractic, better than a, the AMA could have ever done. Because now what they've done is they've gotten a whole profession dependent on uh, insurance payments. They've got the whole profession dependent on it. They've got the whole profession trained to accept, to diagnose, treat conditions, something that chiropractic is not designed to do. And now, guess what they're doing? Pulling away the insurance. You talk about, you talk to anybody who's playing the insurance game today in the United States, and, they're, and you're going to say, hey, so how's next year? I don't know. I have no idea. Can you imagine in your business, right? You're trying to you buy a house, buy a car, go on a vacation. And now somebody says, hey, you know what you were making last year? You made uh, 250000 last year. It's going to be 125 this year. Oh, and next year it might be 75000 You can't build a stable, solid business with an insurance-based model. I had, a, I had a guy that I was working with here in the States, um, and I've been telling him for years, you have to go cash. You have to go cash. You have to go cash. And I talked to him last week. I said, how are you doing? And he says, Oh my goodness. He goes, I just went from 120 a visit, you know, insurance is being paid to $30 a visit. 
any business model, that's a disaster, you know? And so, but if you're in the cash environment, and, and I build all 20 of my offices in, in cash environments, I've never worked in anything other than cash. You have to be able to create value for what you do. But in order to create value for what you do, you have to have the mindset down. You have to be able to talk with authority, right? You have to have the skills. You have to be able to deliver the goods. And you have to be able to communicate the value of chiropractic. And that's where the communication comes in. So there's all these components to success in chiropractic that are frankly not being taught under a CCE accredited institution. When you're at Life West, when you're at Life University, when you're at Sherman College, you get that because the leaders of those schools recognize the importance of it and they are skating to where the puck is going in the future. You're very blessed to be at those type of schools. But I gotta tell you, in some of these other schools uh, that, that this is going, this message is gonna be released, people are saying, what did you just say? You know, so I've never heard that before. My gosh, I, they don't tell us that in school. You know, and so, this is kind of the, the grand hoodwink of the profession. And that's why we work so hard at, at Schubel Vision to, to flip that around. Yeah, that's why I wanted to talk to you because I, I feel like that's not known. I, I mean, the little bit of research that I've done, 65% of chiropractic students coming out of school are defaulting on their loans because they're not making enough money to pay the bare minimum payment. And so whatever the schools are providing, it's not enough. We, we need more. We need to learn how to communicate chiropractic effectively. We need to learn how to find those mentors like you and other people and ask the right questions so you know we can figure out what clues towards success are actually there and and find our own way in the profession and you've you know you've provided so much in that direction you know what do you feel like is the next wave in chiropractic is it going to stay the same is it going to get worse like where where are we headed and how can we as students help create a better future for chiropractic well you know donnie epstein the founder of network good friend of mine uh, always says that humanity, humans don't change their paradigm, even if it's a failed paradigm, until they feel enough pain, right? The people don't make a change. Many of the people that are gonna come into your office, unfortunately, they haven't come to see you first, right? They've gone the whole medical route, treating symptoms, treating diseases, and that has finally failed them to the point where nobody else says they can help them. And then they say, let me try the alternative, let me go see the chiropractor, right? And, and the big challenge is many chiropractors then do the same failed uh, paradigm with them. They, they go and they treat their symptoms and stuff instead of looking for the underlying cause to the uh, disease that is happening within the individual and working with what's right rather than working with what's wrong. So I think as students, uh, again, you mentioned it, I think as students, really how you are as a student will in many ways determine how you are as a doctor of chiropractic. And again, it's, this is not students' fault. It, it, it does seem like a, contract that they have with the schools, right? I pay you the money, you give me the education. Now, the, 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 the sad part about it is, yes, they're giving you education, but it's a CCE accredited education, which is not valid in order to practice chiropractic successfully. Get me. Now, don't get me wrong. You need it to get a license, right? You need it to get the, uh, uh, to be able to practice, but then to be successful in practice. See, having a license and being successful in practice, that's two different things. Any moron can repeat back to, to the CCE, you know, uh, National Boards 1, National Board, NBCE. You could, you could, you know, the alphabet soup of chiropractic. You could repeat back anything like a moron. But the, the fact of the matter is the chiropractic practice, the practice of chiropractic is a dynamically changing world. And you've got to change with it. Otherwise, you're dead in the water. And so the, the communication strategies are constantly changing. The marketing strategies are constantly changing. The patient experience is constantly changing. So you've got to stay up with that. You've got to be in with that. And the only way to do it is through people that are actually doing it in the real world. And so, again, when I say I go on to chi many chiropractic campuses I'm banned from, but other chiropractic campuses, when I go on, there's really not much of a turnout because it's not required, right? If I was a CCE required class, well, then I'd have, you know, if I'm 5,000 students at the school, all 5,000 would have the benefit of my knowledge. But I'm not a CCE requirement to, to come and listen to somebody like me, right? They, they, they'd rather have you learn about the, uh, about the gallbladder, you know, or, or about how to do a prostate check or a vaginal check. You know, it's the most hilarious thing. When I was testi testifying a few years ago, uh, you know, to, to in, in Washington, when the CCE was up for renewal, you know, one of the things I said to them, I said, hey, would you guys ever go, you know, get your prostate checked by a chiropractor? And they all laughed their head off. I said, 
Exactly. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Well, that's our education, you know, and, and this is being supported by uh, U.S. government funding. So, you know, I'm so I feel so free right now because I could talk like this before. I used to have to say that what I was saying right now was what my friend, Dr. Judd O'Grady, the co-author of my smash hit book said, because I sat on the board of a chiropractic college, the, the Sh Sherman Board of Trustees, Sherman College of Chiropractic. But now that I'm off the Sherman Board, I served eight years. I'm free. I can say whatever I want. And I'm, so I'm, I'm speaking the truth out of my uh, out of my voice rather than uh, you know using Judd O'Grady as the fall guy. Uh, but that's that's just it. The big lie to the students is that what you're learning in school is going to teach you how to be successful. And by the way, that's at any school. I'm talking Sherman College, Life West, Life University. They're doing their best under the conditions, under the situation. But unless you have a consistent and constant and persistent communication with people outside in the real world, doing the real thing and doing it successfully, you are not prepared. You're not preparing yourself. So you may get all the best grades, you may be valedictorian, but if you don't have the real world training, you're dead in the water. And here's the big mistake people do. They say, well, I'll focus on that when I'm out in the real world. Oh my goodness. I mean, can you imagine, okay, I'm gonna start a business, right? I'm gonna accumulate $200,000 worth of debt first. Then I'm going to go out, open my doors, and then I'm going to say, okay, now let me learn what I have to do. And that's why there's the default rate. Again, it's because they've been lied to. It's because they thought that what I learned in school was going to teach me to be successful. I don't need anything else. And so what you see in, in chiropractic college, what I see when I visit chiropractic colleges, the people that show up to my lecture, it's, it's like, you ever hear of the 10% control 90% of the world, right? It's like, almost like the chiropractic Illuminati. Those people that go the extra step, right, that, that say, yes, I'm passing my CCE accredited classes. Yes, I'm going to all my classes. But on top of that, after school, I stay for, to go see Dr. Schubel. I stay to go see Dr. Dill. I go see Dr. Borla. I go see people that are killing it in practice, right? Those are the people that when you look a few years down the road, they're doing fantastic in practice because it's a formula. It doesn't change. It's, you know, what I love about chiropractic, it's based on, 33 immutable principles, you know, the Palmer laws of life. When you're working within those principles, success and abundance is natural and imminent. When you're working outside of those principles, success and abundance is something that, that is very difficult to find. And so my advice, you know, as a student is again, look to get involved in a leadership position uh, in one of the chiropractic philosophy groups or, or technique groups and start to bring in people Start to identify key people in the profession that are doing well, we'd say killing it, right? And bring them in and bring as many students as you can in to see them. And you've got to explain to the students, look, I know you think you're getting this at school. You are not. And explain it to them in that fashion. The clock is ticking. It's a ticking time bomb, this, this, uh, this $200,000 or more of debt. It's a ticking time bomb. you got to prepare yourself so the day you open that practice, you know, you got to learn on the dime that you're that you're on right now, which is the school dime, right, or whatever your 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 loan dime, your federal loans, that's your chance to learn. You do not want to start to learn this when you get out. You want to have it all set up for graduation day. Graduation day is like great. Now I can apply what I learned. Let's go. And of course, you're always going to be learning, but you got to get yourself that foundation. You can't walk into practice going, "Let's see what we're going to do here." You have to know exactly what it is you want who you are as a chiropractor and what you have to do to obtain the success that you deserve. Yeah. And I think so, so exactly what you're saying. I think so many students, you know, Oh, I'm just going to focus on school. I'm going to get good grades. I'm going to get through school. Then I'm going to focus on practice and I'm going to, you know, have a successful practice. And unfortunately, because of, you know, the $200,000 worth of debt that you're in, it doesn't really work that way. Like your time in school is the time to cultivate, the mental attitude to cultivate the communication skills to cultivate your brand so that you can like you know flourish in practice so um last question i wanted to ask you how can people get in touch with you you've provided so much value you know it's obvious to me and i'm sure to a lot of other students that we need these skills to be successful so that we can really get out there and change the world through chiropractic you know, where can students learn more about you and how can students get those skills to be successful? 
Okay, well, first thing I would work on if I was a student is the mindset. And, and that's what this, this book was written, Cast to Be Chiropractors, was written specifically. You're going to walk through from our student experience what the mindset we had uh, to get to where we are today. So this is like taking a walk back to see the Schubelator, uh when he's in school in, in chiropractic college and what the mindset was. How did I build a, a massive student practice and, and complete all my requirements within two quarters? How did that happen? starts right here. So you can get this on amazon.com or www.casttobechiropractors.com. Uh, the, the other thing is the mission trips. I find that hugely valuable for students. Uh, we are now booked up to probably 2018, but you can go on www.thebestmissiontripever.com for that one. And we also offer associate positions. Uh, I have, you know, as, as we mentioned, 20 chiropractic offices. And I got to tell you, it's a great opportunity because we provide room and board, so your only responsibility, we, we even have maid service for our docs, so the only responsibility they have is to communicate chiropractic and adjust. And on top of that, when they get done uh, with a year contract with us, they're fluent in Spanish, which is, I got to tell you, from a business standpoint, it's one of the fastest growing demographics in the United States right now. It's the highest rate of people entering the $50,000 a year above income bracket. So it's a growing demographic that many chiropractors are not taking care of. So if you wanted to graduate after a year, like you graduate school, you come down, and I've had people, by the way, pay off their lo student loans in two or three years working for me, but we require at least a one-year contract. The, the thing is, you're gonna come down there and I'm gonna train you to be what I call a chiropractic paratrooper. I'm gonna be able to push you out of a plane anywhere in the world with a parachute, and you're gonna come out with your PISA forms blazing with success, knowing how to communicate chiropractic, knowing who you are, knowing how to adjust. I mean, we go into orphanages, and you wanna see kids? Great, we got a thousand kids you can take care of. You wanna see people with uh, you know disabilities? Fantastic, we got a bunch of those people that you can see the tremendous results that chiropractic has in their lives. You wanna see old people? Great, we got a ton of 80, 90 year olds that show up and get adjusted. You wanna see pregnant women? Great, we got tons of them. You know, so it's, it's an opportunity to become the master. Right, so that when you go in, you open up your own practice. You have all the skills you need. You have money saved, and you're ready to rock and roll with what it is that you do. That's a, that's our chiropractic commando training, and you can find more information on that at www.shubelvisionworldwide.com. Shubelvisionworldwide.com. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Liam Schubel. Uh, it's been so great to talk with you and just hear all the great work you're doing in chiropractic. Uh, so this has been a production of DC to be revolution where we think big to live large. If you want to stay in touch with us, subscribe to the cha YouTube channel. Um, leave some comments below for Dr. Schubel. He's mentioned so many different things that may have rubbed you the wrong way. So, you know, leave a comment, try a create the conversation that we want to be having to ensure success of future generations of students. So thanks again for being here and thanks for providing so much value. Thanks. It's been my great pleasure, and I got to tell you, I love the 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 saying that you have for your uh, for your show. Uh, one of the uh, sayings that I have in my smash hit book is, "The bigger the vision, the bigger the life. The bigger the vision, the bigger the life. So get a bigger vision, and you'll have a bigger life." Love you guys. Appreciate you, and thank you for the opportunity to share. Appreciate you so much, my friend. Yes, thank you.